Praise God. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll continue with our study. Master God, we thank you. We praise you for your love, kindness, and grace to you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege and the honor that you afford us to be your people. Dear God, we thank you for allowing us to gather here that we might study your word, that we would hear and understand your heart and complete and fulfill the very purpose for which you created us. So dear God, we pause in your presence and we pray your divine will and purpose be accomplished in, with, and through our lives. It's in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Tonight we're going to um, take a look at, at being sold out, the ultimate sacrifice, giving God our lives and, and how that uh, may play out or, or look as we move forward through our Christian journey. Okay? So let's go to Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21. We're going to begin at verse 1. Acts 21, beginning at verse 1. It reads, Now it came to pass that when he had departed, when we had departed from them and set sail, running a straight course, we came to Kos, the following day to Rhodes, and from there to Petra. And finding a ship sailing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria, and landed in Tyre. For there the ship was to unload her cargo. And finding disciples, we stayed, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul, through the Spirit, not to go up to Jerusalem. When we had come to the end of those days, we departed and went on our way. And they all accompanied us with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we knelt down on the shore and prayed. When we had taken our leave of, of one another, we boarded the ship and they returned home. And when we had finished our board, our board from Tyre, we came to Ptolemaeus, greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judah. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem. For the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he would not be persuaded, we cease saying, The Lord's, excuse me, the will of the Lord be done. All right. Praise our God. We want to take, uh, um, as we're taking a look at this, at the text tonight, we, we understand that we're looking at Paul's third missionary journey. So he's been, he's been on the battlefield a while. He's been through some things. Uh, he's been following after God and doing God's will for a minute. But, but when we look at it, I want you to notice that when we made the ultimate sacrifice, when we determined that our lives belong to God and that we're giving ourselves completely to the master, that we're living for him, the rest of the journey is simply life falling into place. We, we stress out and we, we, we have a hard time dealing with things because um, a lot of times we want to take them back. But when we've given ourselves completely over to God, 
the sacrifice and sacrifice ourselves to him, we discover that life is, life is just a journey of God ordering our steps and putting stuff in place. And the good steps and the, and the bad, what we call bad or difficult, God is putting them in, into place for us. We're in Acts chapter 21. Giving ourselves over to God completely is, is what um, we do when we have Jesus empowers us uh, to remain faithful. When we give ourselves over to the Lord completely, we find it within our ability to, to be faithful to God, to not, not to have to um, be turned away or, or denied because life gets too hard or difficult. But we can, we can be faithful. Now, faithful don't mean struggle. In fact, it means the very opposite. Faithful is the uh, doing God's will, even when there is a struggle happening. So faithfulness to God, when we're faithful because we've given ourselves over completely, we're living faithful to God, what that does is allow us to make good, godly choices and decisions where we can walk after him. Being faithful to God leads to good decisions. Good decisions lead to a good life. And it all starts with total surrender to the Lord. When we totally surrender to God, we trust God to order our steps. When we do that, when we trust him to do that, we make good decisions, godly choices, God-honoring decisions. It may not always make sense to us, but it's God-honoring. And then God's honoring choices or God-honoring decisions lead to a good life. So let's see how, how this kind of makes sense in the text that we're looking at. Acts 21 verses 1 uh, through 4. It says, Now it came to pass that when he had departed from there, from them and set sail, running a straight course, we, we came to Kaz the following day to Rhodes and from there to Petra. And finding a ship sailing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left and sailed to Syria and landed in Tyre. For there the ship was to unload her cargo. And finding disciples, we stayed there seven days and told Paul, they told Paul through the Spirit not to go to Jerusalem. So we're on Paul's third missionary journey. He, he is on his way, actually headed back toward home, uh, his home base, Antioch. But when he gets to this, this place named uh, Tyre and, to, and, and on, they say, don't go. Don't go back to Jerusalem. Don't, don't go to your next stop. Don't, don't go there because the Jews are trying to do something to you. So he's on his return trip. He, he's been all the way over into, in, into uh, the, the Mediterranean Sea area, all into Greece, and he's, he's been over there. He's been preaching, and he, he's on his way back, and he gets to the place where he gets to make a choice. To go north, I'm going home, I go to Antioch, I go to my, my base where I departed from and started my journey. If I go south, I go to Jerusalem, the place where everybody's telling me not to go, that's where they want to do something to me. They warned him, saying, don't go. Don't, 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 don't go to Jerusalem, because those are the Jews. Remember, Paul was the, the apostle to the Gentiles. So he could have found an excuse in his initial calling not to go where he knew God was sending him. He could have leaned on his initial calling. God, you called me to go to the Gentiles. The Gentiles are in Antioch. They're not in Jerusalem. So he could, have, he could have leaned on what he thought his calling was or his purpose was and not done what God was leading him to do. In fact, he could have followed the encouragement of all of those who were warning him and tired not to go. Don't go to Jerusalem. But look at what God is doing here. In this text, we find that Jerusalem is no longer the center of the movement of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. See, they're saying, don't go to Jerusalem. This is happening all in the Gentile world. Mm -hmm. If you see where Paul is going, where he went from, and where they say he's coming back from, all of that is the Gentile world. 
So we're getting, Luke is telling us here in Acts how, really how the church is spreading and how God is working with the Gentile church mm. and it's not really in the old systems of Jerusalem mm. because he, Jerusalem was the place you wanted to go if that was the old system because that's where God's temple was and that's where God hung out and, and that's where you did some stuff. But here, his, the disciples are saying, don't go, don't return back. And what's interesting about, about Paul hearing this in the Gentile world, don't go to Jerusalem, it is the Spirit of God speaking through Gentile believers. Mm -hmm. so, so now it is the Gentile church mm -hmm. telling the apostle, don't go back to them because they want to hurt you. Mm -hmm. and, and the text says that the Spirit... They, they spoke to Paul, warned Paul by the Spirit, through the Spirit. It was the Spirit of God who was telling them what to tell Paul so Paul would understand what he was up against. Mm -hmm. His choice was clear. So when we come and we're sold out, it don't mean that we follow God knowing that or, or not knowing that sometimes it's going to get hard. Mm -hmm. It's not that we follow God believing that just because life throws us a curveball somehow the enemy has got them jumped on us and empowered. Maybe, just maybe, God is leading us home a different way. Maybe God is has set something up where we, we're moving for him because, you see, when we decide that we're, we're really all sold out for God, we made that ultimate sacrifice, bottom line, it don't matter what the devil does. Uh. We, we, yes, he does crazy things, and yes, he brings trouble, and yes, he tries to distract us, but we spend so much time talking about what the devil is doing that we almost forget that God is still in charge. Mm. God is still in charge on our worst day. God is still in charge when yes. we get our worst news. God is still God no matter what it is, and we ain't got... But one last nerve, and it's about to pop. God is still in charge. So when we, we, we can't allow um, the enemy or bad news or folk encouraging us, be safe, be careful, do what's right, take care of yourself. We can't allow that to distract us from the fact that God's in charge and he's called us to live faithfully unto him. The Spirit, Acts chapter 21. The Spirit of God is speaking through them to the Apostle Paul. And, and, and they're saying, don't go, don't go. And I love the way that, that uh, Luke gives us the map. You know, when we go to the south of, mm -hmm. of Cyprus, that meant they went to Cyprus on the left. That means they went south. So he kind of shows us where, where they went so we can know where they landed. And, and we can see geographically that Paul had a choice. Mm. I can go left and go, go to safety. I can go right and go to destiny. Mm. Which do I do? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where, that's where we, he was. Verse 5. When we had come to the end of those days, we departed and went on our way. And they all accompanied us with wives and children till we were out of the city. And when we knelt down on the shore and prayed, when we had taken our leave of, of one another, we boarded the ship and they returned home. Mm -hmm. Luke might be suggesting to us that when we serve God, when we look after what God has placed in our charge, it is a family affair. Everyone is there. He says that the, the men, the wives, the children, mm -hmm. they were all involved in the matter of faith. Mm -hmm. They all, it, it's not okay, you're of age, now you can stay home if you want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody was, <laughs> everybody was engaged and involved in the matter of faith. And that was a, a great thing. And they went with Paul all the way to the shore. Mm -hmm. um, so, they, they cared for Paul and his companions for their entire stay until they were no longer in their care. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. They didn't do enough and didn't let them go. Mm -hmm. They didn't do a, a, what was appreciated. Oh, you don't even appreciate it. I ain't going to do it no more. <laughs> they, they 
did what they were supposed to do until Paul and his companion were no longer under their care. So it is our responsibility to take care of what God assigns to us until it's no longer in our care. That's, that's, that's one reason why it is, it is um, uh, not a good thing. I wanted to use the word shameful, then I wasn't going to use it, but so I told you I wasn't going to use the word shameful. Um, that so many of us are, are, are content with watching God's house go down. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. So many of us are content with watching the message of the gospel lose its power and authority. You see, it's not just a building that goes down. It is, it is a neglect of responsibility. And we are called, the people of God have been charged by God to take care of certain things. Yeah. And when we're supposed to take care of those things, we do it as long as it is in our care. Yeah. It's not as long as there's other people who are going to help me or as long as I don't have to do it by myself or yeah. as long as I'm tired of doing it now. Mm -hmm. But we do it as long as it is in our care yeah. because the assignment is not made by those we serve. Mm -hmm. The assignment is made by God who sends us to serve. So we, we, we stop serving based upon those we serve. But, we, but we're really called to serve by the one who, in who gives us the ability or calls us to serve. And, and, and we can't stop serving because the ones that we serve don't appreciate what we give. Especially, yeah. when, especially when what we give them we didn't come up with, but God gave it to us. Uh -huh. So it's our responsibility to do what God has called us to do as long as they are in our care. He said, they, said they, they walked with us all the way out to the city. They went with us. And look at what that means, though. They probably, they probably did not sail on the Sabbath. They did not have a five-day work week. <laughs> Which would suggest, if it's not the Sabbath, it has to be one of the other six days. Which is probably a work day. That means that the folk who went with them, taking care of them, had to hit the pause button on other matters of their lives. Maybe jobs, maybe school, maybe whatever, the farming, whatever they had to do. That had to wait until they took care of what God had assigned to them. Mm -hmm. Do you see the priorities happening mm -hmm. here? What takes priority? I got to take care of my house. I got to take care of my farm. I got to take care of my car. Or do I need to take care of what God has called and assigned me to do? What God has made me responsible for? And if I take care of what God has made me, made me responsible for, then God finds some way in his divine wisdom to make sure that everything else in my life gets handled too. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the, the wisdom we can't see. The, you know, it's like God got extra days we don't know about because God has a way of putting more than seven days in a week and more than 24 hours in a day. Yeah. He, 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 can, he can do that. You know, he made the sun stand still and the sundial didn't move, right? <laughs> God, can, God can add time to our, our situation. So we need to find a way to be faithful to him and trust that somehow, God, you're going to handle and do this thing because remember, when we have made the ultimate sacrifice of giving our lives to God, the rest of our journey is just God putting things in place. It is God orchestrating. It is us following. That's, that's, that's what happens. But it starts with us giving ourselves totally, totally to God. So they had to put the stuff on hold while they fulfilled their obligation to God. Unfulfilled responsibilities result in an unfulfilled life. Mm. Mm. Unfulfilled responsibilities result in an unfulfilled life. If we don't handle what we're supposed to handle, we pay for it down the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't harvest what you never plant. Mm -hmm. Or what is never planted. You may not plant. Mm -hmm. But you can't harvest if it's never planted. Can't reap if it's never so. So if I don't handle my responsibility, if I don't study, I'm probably gonna pass, I'm gonna, probably not gonna pass very many tests. 
If I don't pass very many tests, I'm probably not going to be in school long. <laughs> if I don't, if I'm not in school very long, I probably won't get that degree. Amen. If I don't get the degree, I probably won't get the job that that degree, I need the degree to get. Amen. So it's a snowball effect. Mm. If I don't handle my responsibility when it's small, it becomes a boulder on my back later. Yes. So if, if I don't pay my 10%, I may end up losing 95%. Nice, nice. <laughs> because, because it just grows. If I don't forgive now, I may end up with, with, with the result of, of unforgiveness growing in my body. Mm -hmm. Because stress and the pain of it. it be, and it's not God's punishment. It's just the path we walk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like God is paying you back. No. You just, it, it's, you, it's just the path that we choose to walk. And we can get off that path. But so unfulfilled responsibilities result in an unfulfilled life because God gives us assignments that are designed for our good and our blessing. Mm -hmm. The assignments that God gives us yes. are designed for us. Mm -hmm. They're designed for our blessing. Divine. And yes, he uses us to, to bless the kingdom, but I've never seen a dry pipe giving a drink to someone else. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I'm saying? You never, you never, you never, blessing can't pass through you mm -hmm. without leaving some residue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's when we, when we give ourselves to God and, and, and do what he's called us to do, then it's designed, not only that we are being a blessing, it's designed so we will be blessed. It is when we decide that we're going to manufacture and, and, and identify our own blessing and we cut off blessings to others, we stifle our own. Yes. It, it sounds crazy to the world, but it's so true. Yeah. When I decide that I'm, I, I, I need all that I got, I, I, I got to use it all for me. I work so hard, it's mine, I have a right to it, and I can sit by it and not be a blessing to other people, I keep what I got until I lose it mm. and and then I'm don't my blessing is stifled. It mm. stops. It's it's it, it dries up. Mm. And you say, but I got enough. But you and the crazy thing about God's the way God works and, 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 and our and our blessed life or or not so blessed life is we never really know how much we miss until it shows up. Mm. And then we say, oh God, I could have been doing this all the time. Mm -hmm. I could have had this all right. along. Because right. mm -hmm. we never know how much we're missing until we finally get it right. And then we're like, oh, God. But if we always get it wrong and we never get it right, we'll go to glory not knowing how much we have missed mm -hmm. by simply not being faithful mm -hmm. and doing what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. We won't know. Yeah. He said, well, don't hurt me if I don't know. Well, it hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It hurt. It's like having your lights cut off because you don't know that there's money to pay your light bill in your trunk. <laughs> so it don't hurt. Yeah, it does. Your lights are off. <laughs> and you got money to pay it. But you just don't know you got the money. So not knowing something can hurt. Yes. Yes. All right. The Bible says that they parted company. Luke said, when we got there, we went, to, uh, we went and got on the boat and they went home. But something happened before that happened. They covered one another in prayer. Mm -hmm. It said that they got to the place where they had to separate. Look how they part ways. They got to the place where it was time for them to get on the boat and go and then them go back home. They knelt on the shore and they prayed. Yeah. They, they prayed together. They covered each other. So it's not just the journey that we pray together. Sometimes it's the departure. They knew they knew what Paul, where Paul was going, yeah. and Paul knew how hard and difficult their road would be. Yeah. And they prayed for each other to pull it together. And and and, and it's 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 disempowering to us, church, when we don't pray together. Come on. People will say. I can pray by myself. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. You can. You absolutely can.
But there is something about corporate prayer. Yeah. It's something about other people seeing things about you in you that you can't see and know about yourself. Yeah. That God revealing how to pray and, and what to pray for. So it's the coming together. And, and, and we, don't, we have a hard time doing that because prayer seems, in our culture, prayer seems to be an activity of futility. Mm. It seems it seem like prayer don't cover it, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, just that's just like just talking about it. What good is that going to do? You know, go do the work. Mm. Well, prayer is the work when you pray. And, yeah. and so when we come together and, and we cover one another, then we're able to move to the next step, the next phase, the next place in our lives. Yeah. So Paul, they, 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 sit, they got on the boat. They're leaving. Folk and Tyre went back home. They, I guess they said, well, we told him. Mm. You know, don't go, Paul. Paul, don't go. Verse 7. Who are we? We got here early at night. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> yeah, we got here early. Verse 7. And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, from Tyre, excuse me, we came to Ptolemais, Ptolemaeus, I think I said, Gre greeted the brethren and stayed with them one day. Mm -hmm. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea mm -hmm. and entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Mm -hmm. Now, Get it? We're still in the Gentile world. Mm. The Ptolemies are the, the, the royal family of Egypt. All right, that, 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 that's, 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 they're over there. So here's, we're in an area where a Greek emperor of Egypt has, has placed his name over on, on, on the Holy Land culture, okay? Mm. So he has a place, his name is there. And so he said, we came, we found some believers, we stayed one day, and we got up out of there. The boat was leaving. We probably didn't get mad at the church. It was just the boat was leaving. Mm -hmm. And on the next day, his companion went to Caesarea. That's a bigger place, a bigger port. And they entered the house of Philip, the evangelist. Remember when, when uh, they had to pick out seven seven people to put over the, the things they picked out for? Okay, so there's seven. Philip was one of them. He has four daughters, and they all prophesied. When, when we look at this thing here, the body of Christ is... The servants refresh itself. Let me say it different. Everywhere they went, they found other believers. Because it's in the company of other believers, not only did they deposit Paul's preaching, but they were refreshed. Mm -hmm. That they were taken care of. They were given food. Food. They were given. They were given shelter. It wasn't like today when you know the cruise ship stops. You can go and hang out in the hotel. Or so. it wasn't like that. And so they went and they found the, the, the believers, and the believers took care of the church. Yeah. No, y'all just saying yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. You get the believers. Right. Make sure other believers had something to eat. Mm -hmm. The believers made sure other believers. And Paul and his companions wasn't too proud to tell them we need somewhere to stay. Mm. Yeah. See, a lot of times believers could find help if we wasn't so content or so determined to make people think we're so holy we don't need help. Mm. Mm. We probably could find somebody to help us um, if, if we would say, I need help. Mm. I'm going through something. So the body, the servants were refreshed by the body and the body was edified by the servants. Paul went and they edified them, but they also, you, you, do you see the, 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 the back and forth? Mm -hmm. Do you see what's happening inside the body? Mm -hmm. Paul is moving to a place, to a destiny, where he's going to, he's going to suffer all kinds of pain, and he knows it. Mm -hmm. But on his way to his own stuff, going through his own head trip, working and dealing with his own spirit. You know, if Jesus didn't want to go, and he was Jesus, mm -hmm. chances are Paul didn't want to go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he, he, he's, he's like, do I really want, and he's going, but the whole time he's had, going through his stuff, he's blessing other people. Yeah. How different is that from our mindset? Yes. How different is that from how, how, we, go, how we handle uh, the, the burden of life, the stress of our situations? 
We don't want to help nobody. We want everybody. If you got any way to get this stuff off me, come do it. And, 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 you know, how dare you ask me for something? I'm going through something right now myself. And, and that's how we do. It's like, no, 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 no. Your world needs to stop and, and take care of my world right now. And, and that's how we kind of see it. But if we follow Paul in this journey, he's going to Jerusalem. Don't go. They're going to do something to you. But the whole process and going, he's stopping and he's dealing with, with the other believers and hanging out with them and teaching and talking and, and doing what he does to encourage their heart and move forward. <laughs> now, and when he gets to Caesarea, that's where he's at that place of decision. It's, mm. cri it's critical now. See, Caesarea, it'll, if you looked on the map, literally, if you went north and followed the coast, you go back to Antioch. And that's where his headquarters was that's where he started the journey if you make if you go south you go on you go to it down and you go on into Jerusalem into the place where he had been called to go so he's at he's and it, it is approximately midway so he's there at this place geographically where he probably is mentally and spiritually trying to say what it is you know hearing people say don't go Knowing what you're go where, where you're gonna go and, and and it's gonna be some pain or, or some difficult times there, but yet believing, knowing that God has called you, how do you put yourself in check and do and what you know that you gotta do should do anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how 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 do you tell your fears to shut up and and, and, and say yes to God? Mm -hmm. See, you're in this place of choice and you got you got cheerleaders and coaches. On the side, telling you that what decision you are you ought to make. But what's wonderful about the text, thank you, Luke, is Paul finds himself in a safe place for the mental battle, for the mm. spiritual warfare. Mm. He is at Philip the Evangelist, mm. who got seven daughters who prophesied. Oh, excuse me, four daughters who prophesied. Yes. He and the Bible says we were there for many days. Now, he told you how many days we were here for seven days. We stayed for one day, but here he says we're here for many days because you're closer, Paul. You're closer to Jerusalem than you've been. Why do you stop now? Why did Why didn't you hang out in one of the other places when you're further away? You stayed seven days. You only stayed one day, and now, but now you're staying many days where you have to decide what you're going to do. Mm. See, choices, when we choose to follow God, we, we have to take our time and know that, that God is with us in our movement and how we proceed. We need to, we need to, we need to know that. <laughs> we need to know what God is doing and how God is, is doing it, okay? So, Philip provided a safe place for Paul to rest mm. and hear from God. Do, do you have such a place? Come on. Do you have such a place where it's safe for you to rest and hear from God? Do you turn aside every now and then? Mm. Just hit the pause button on your busy life and all the responsibilities and all the things you got going on, all the madness around you. Do you hit the pause button and turn aside and hear so when you can make the choice, do I go north to safety or south to destiny? Mm. Do I go where everyone is telling me to go and take care of myself? Or do I go where I know and believe God is sending me? Do mm. you have a place where you where you can make that choice? Or or, or, or do we take the time anymore to, to pause mm. and just, just to, to spend it in a safe place? To hear what God is saying. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's what Paul does here. Paul and Phillips take a, a safe, make a, a safe place. You also need to recognize that, that Luke gives us a lot of information. Luke said that he stays at Phillips, at, at Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven, mm -hmm. who had four daughters who prophesied. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. He don't give us that much information about all the other people. Mm -hmm. He says they they, they, they sought out the, the me, 
they, they, they sought out the um, disciples. They sought out the believers, and they stayed with. That's what he tells us about the other places. Right. But here he says, Philip, mm -hmm. the evangelist, mm -hmm. one of the seven. Mm -hmm. So he's not. He's Philip, a believer. He's an evangelist. He got something he does for God. He, he preaches the gospel. And by the way, he's, he's not just an evangelist. He's one of the seven that has been selected and anointed by the apostles to do what they do, what, do what he do. That, that's him. And, and he, he's living a life to where he got four daughters and all of them prophesy. Come on. That's a lot of information that he's given us. Be, and I think we get that kind of information because at least for me it says that godly decisions and choices are are, ma are better made in the company of other folk who are sold out. Come on, mm -hmm. Pastor. See, we, we listen to our best friends, our girlfriends, yeah. uh, you know, big mom people we grew up with. We, we listen to Oprah and, and whoever else is on, you know, Dr. Phil or whoever else it is, and we, uh, we let them influence our choices and our decisions. If, if I'm following Paul and listening to Paul as he's struggling to understand what it is and do what God has called him to do, Paul is spending time, the most time, in a place where every where there's other people who are sold out to God like he is. Mm -hmm. That they're trying to follow Jesus like he is. Their mission is to share the gospel like his mission is. He don't go to best friends, drinking buddies, cutting buddies. He don't go to people who, who know me the best. Or He goes to folk who, who know the word of God, who know Bible, who, who know Jesus. And, and, and that's where he spends time. And that's where he deals with what's going on. And he's going to need it. He's going to need that time where he can, he can within himself, know. That I'm going to do God's will no matter what. That place where, where you dot that I and cross the T and say, this is it. I'm going to do what God wants. Mm -hmm. See, that's a decision you got to come to. That's not something you walk into. Come on. See, if you just start walking, the devil can not use it. Oh, I, I, I'm still serving God, but we can bend a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But that's if you make the choice on the fly. Mm -hmm. But if you sit back and, you, and you, you, if I determine that I'm going to serve God and I ain't bending and I ain't breaking, mm -hmm. I'm going to serve God and I'm not, I'm not going to be pushed off the dime. I'm not going to compromise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve God and no, I ain't going to say God understands. I'm going to do what I understand God want me to do. Yes. Yes. When, when I make that, and when you make that kind of choice and decision up front, mm -hmm. then you can go through all the obstacles that may come your way. Mm -hmm. But you got to make the choice. You got to say, hey, and you got to say, okay, God, what, what do you want? So making those choices are oftentimes better done when you're dealing with um, other people in the company of other people who are, who are sold out for God. And, and Luke lets us know that Philip and the daughters are. Okay? Now look at verse 9. Look at, look, we're almost done, y'all. Verse 9. <laughs> because I always go over. <laughs> and they say I'm late. We're going to get done early. We're going to get Verse 9. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. Mm -hmm. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Look at how God is arranging stuff. Remember, I, we, we said earlier that this is all happening in the Gentile world, right. which suggests that the, the, that the center of the Jehovah movement is no longer really in Jerusalem. Mm. Okay, it is, this is, the spirit of God is in the churches as we move forward. But here's another indication that God is setting things straight, putting life back in order. Philip's daughters, not Philip, is called the prophets. Come on. 
See, it, 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 it says he has four daughters who prophesy. Mm. He's an evangelist. Mm. They're prophets. Mm. And, and usually you have is the man, the, the, the right. especially the father, mm. who has the higher office, the higher calling. Mm. But not here. He mm. has four daughters mm. that, that, that's preaching better than him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he got four daughters. Mm. That, 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 that has a deeper word than he does. Mm. And, and so it's not only, not only has, has the, 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 the center of the Jehovah movement come out of Jerusalem, we can see that the spirit of God is using everybody now. Mm. It's, it's, it's in the Gentile world, not only in the Gentile world, it's also in, in, in all genders, in both genders, not all is only two, in both genders. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> so he, he he because it wasn't only in the Jewish world that women were treated as second class citizens and and property. It was the it was the the status or the way of the times mm -hmm. in a lot of places. In other places it wasn't, but in that area. So what we see now is is that God is is is, is leveling that field. He's mm -hmm. changing it and he said, no, we we can have we have four prophetess mm -hmm. who's doing this thing. Now prophets, prophet, prophets there you go, they have the legacy throughout Hebrew history. Mm -hmm. Not evangelists. Mm -hmm. Evangelist is a new office. Mm -hmm. See so daddy you just get started. Mm -hmm. There's no real connection <clears throat> beyond New Testament for the evangelist that Philip is. Mm -hmm. But there, there's a connection all oh, all the way back into creation for prophets. Right. God always lived, touched people and they prophesied and, and gave a word and talked through people. And so now it, it is the daughters mm. of the man of the house mm. who's connected to the legacy of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. That breaks the whole flow yeah. of the temple because the temple always traced it back through the man, the prophet. It was mm -hmm. always through the head of the household, the yeah. man in the home. But here... Prophet connects, connected to God and the legacy of Hebrew history is the four daughters. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if that's as significant to you as it is me, mm -hmm. but that's more than more than a gender issue, more than women's rights. Mm. It says that God's mm. love is so inclusive mm. that he will shape cultures. Mm -hmm. He will go against social norms. Mm -hmm. He will upset mm -hmm. what we think is the way things are mm -hmm. to establish who he is and what he does. Mm -hmm. God is not bound by our social tendencies. Mm -hmm. He's not bound by our sense of civil right and justice. Mm -hmm. God is God. Mm -hmm. And what he says Maybe a violation of our moral understanding because mm -hmm. moralities change. Mm -hmm. God's word does not. Come mm -hmm. on. So his word stands through the change of morality. Mm -hmm. His word stands through the change of cultural norms and, and social uh, uh, rights and politically cor political correctness. God's word stands. Now, I don't mean that we mistreat someone. But it does says that the foundation of our understanding our world need to be the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. The way I understand the world need not be the latest discovery in science. Mm -hmm. The way I understand the world mm -hmm. should not be what is the, mm -hmm. the right now cultural norm or the best way to say something. Yes. Mm -hmm. The way that I see the world need to be the word of God. And as the word of God permits, I will honor your desire to be addressed mm -hmm. a certain way. Mm -hmm. you, you, you with me? Yes. Okay. Because it's, it, it starts, it's in the middle, and it ends with the word of God. And everything else is a reaction to God and his word. Mm -hmm. if, if it's not, then we run the risk of messing up. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... It is the women. They're the ones who's connected to, to, to this whole thing. Also, for those cults mm -hmm. that want to, to, to suggest that um, Holy Spirit and Jesus are less divine, mm. um, 
they have a hard time if they go a little deep. See, those are surface things that they say. They pick up surface areas and they say this, this, and this because it's like picking up rocks on the beach. It's, you know, you don't, you don't have to dig very hard to get those. And so what they do, they pick them up and say, see, see what I have here. But look at, look at what it says. That the, what we find is the Holy Spirit is the source of prophecy here. Mm -hmm. See, Abagus is comes and he gives prophecy about what's going to happen to Paul, and he does it in the, in in the in the tradition of the Old Testament prophet mm -hmm. using a prop and things like that. So he does it in the tradition of an Old Testament prophet. He comes from the place of Jerusalem, Judea. He comes from there, and he gives prophecy. But the text says that he gives it is the Holy Spirit who says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's God says, mm -hmm. or the Spirit of God mm -hmm. came upon them. Mm -hmm. It's But here, the Holy Spirit speaks without the aid of saying it's God, it's Jehovah. It's, it, it's the, it, is, it is the Holy Spirit who has the authority and power to be the source of prophecy. Come on, yes, yes, yes. The source of prophecy is divine. Yes. You, you, you with me? Yeah. So when folks says, ah, the Holy Spirit, well, ah! Because he's acting a lot like God right here. Right. He's doing what God does right here. Mm. And he's doing it in the tradition of old prophets. Yeah. To, to tell us that it is God doing it. It's the same spirit that's moving, the same spirit that's acting. It's the spirit of God. It is God doing it. The Holy Spirit is speaking, and he is divine. Right. Okay? Amen. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's absolute confirmation the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Because everyone in the Trinity is divine. The Holy Spirit is there. It is God in three, three, and, and, and three in one, one in three. And people say, How could that be? The only way you could fully understand it, you gotta be one to three. <laughs> Come on. If you're not one of the three, you're not going to fully understand it. So mm -hmm. to say it don't make sense, don't make sense. Mm -hmm. It don't I don't know. How you gonna have one and three? That no no, that's that's math that is that is bound by the time and space continuum. Yeah. Yes. We don't know what math looks like outside of time Come and on, space. Pastor. Come on. Uh, so uh, once we get outside of time and space, ooh, ooh. one can be three and three can be one. Ooh, be, yeah. Because what we have is, is a God who is not bound by time and space who interacts within time and space and makes himself known. Amen. So to say it don't make sense where I live, so what? <laughs> it don't make sense where I live. It don't make sense. So, okay, it don't, it don't, a lot of stuff don't make sense. You know, salt and grits don't make sense. <laughs> or whether I don't need grits at all. I don't eat grits at all. So, do you usually eat salt and grits? Oh, you do? Okay. All y'all who eat salt and grits, I didn't. Okay, I didn't really know. I just made that up because I don't eat grits. Oatmeal and grits together don't make sense. All right, good. All right, good. Good. I got that. One. Okay. It don't. It don't. Don't make. So certain things just don't make sense, and so what? It don't. It don't make sense. Right. We usually don't self-identify with the villains. Come on. We usually don't self-identify with those who are show up in scripture as fighting against God and what God wants. Mm -hmm. We usually self-identify with the blessed, yeah. the faithful, <laughs> the holy, the nice, the kind, mm -hmm. the good looking. Right. That's usually who we self-identify with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually, usually, usually that's what we do. Well, in the text here, those who were entrusted with the care of God's kingdom, God's temple in Jerusalem, are they're now the threat to God's kingdom progressing. Mm, 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 mm. Those who were entrusted with God's care, of the care of God's kingdom, the temple, the 
the, 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 the system of Jehovah worship, mm -hmm. those who are entrusted with that, they're now the ones who's threatening the kingdom of God progressive as it moves forward. Mm. Adam says, don't go. The Jews are going to bind you mm -hmm. and turn you over to the Gentiles. Yeah. He's hanging out with Gentiles. Yeah. Then nobody's tying him up. Mm -hmm. But it's when he gets back to the Jews, mm -hmm. they're going to tie him up. Yeah. The ones who should be taking care of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Those who should be in touch and promoting the promotion and the progressive to progression of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Those who should be prophetic in God's kingdom and doing what God wants them to do, they're the very ones who's threatening the destruction of the move of God. Yeah. Now, I, I said that we don't always identify with them. But sometimes it's those in the church mm. who threatens the advancement of the church. Whoa. And we do it not knowing that we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. We do it when we fail to get involved. We do mm -hmm. it when we fail to support. We, we do it when, when we are more concerned about who we are, what we are, and what we have than what God is doing and how God is using his, this, this place in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. See, the, the Jews around the temple would have told you that they're protecting the way of God. Mm. They would have told you that they're doing what's necessary to put down this upstart cult. Mm. They would have said that this is an, uh, uh, an affront to what God, that we have the fathers and the prophets and Moses and Abraham, all of them, we, that's what we're protecting is what God has done. But they know they were stealing and lying and you didn't know that. But, <laughs> but the system... <laughs> The system, they're saying, we're holding on to the system. We're making, we're making it work. So it's not that they would say we're going to tear this thing down with our, our very hands. But it was the fact that they refused to move with God that made them one who fought against God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You with me? Yeah. So when we in church, when, when believers fail to move with God, they mm. find themselves fighting against God. Oh, yeah. Lord. And we don't always see it that way. You know, God understands is a favorite phrase that people say. God understands. He knows my heart. He knows what I'm up against. He wants to be happy, don't he? But if you, he, he don't really want you to sin to be happy. <laughs> you know, he don't want you to, to have to sin, live in sin to feel fulfilled. There's some we, we have to come and say, yeah, God knows, but we serve him with, with who, we, who we are. Okay. This, this prophet Agabus, he warns Paul and makes Paul's choice clear. You can give your life to Jesus or you can keep it on your own. Okay. When you get to Jerusalem... They're going to bind you up. They're going to lock you up. They're going to tie you up. But you're not in Jerusalem right now. <laughs> now, the people in Tyre already told you, don't go. The Spirit of God said, don't you go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. By the Spirit, we know something bad will happen to you. Don't you go. Don't, don't go. Please don't go. Now he's in Caesarea, and, and this prophet, is, is Agabus is saying, when you get there, mm -hmm. this is what they're going to do to you. Right. They're going to tie you up. But you ain't there yet. You're at the point of decision. Right. You're in Caesarea. You can make a hard left and go home. Right. What do you do? Mm. See, that's why you have to make the decision to be sold out before you get there. Yes. You have to decide that mm. I'm going to do it God's way no matter what hard before you get to the problem. Mm. If, you don't, if you wait until the problem show up to decide to be mm. faithful, you're not going to be faithful. Mm. You got to say, before you get there, I'm going to trust God through the pain. Yeah. I'm going to trust God through the hard time. And, and yes, 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 it's not wishing hard times. I don't want them either. Yeah. No, nobody with good sense won't pain. Yeah. But, but, but it's coming to all of us in, some, in one way or another. Challenge is going to come to all of us in one form or another. So we got to decide that when challenge show up, we're going to be faithful. 
Yeah. If, it, if, if it's in our body, if it's in our finances, in our relationships, and whatever it's in, God, we're going to trust you. We're going to be faithful to you because yeah. it's going to come. And we don't want to make the left and go home. Mm. We want to do what you want us to do. All right? Yeah. Verse 12. Now when he heard these things, both we and those, excuse me, now when we heard these things, both we and those from the place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So when we so when, excuse me, so when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, the will of the Lord be done. Now, Paul was encouraged by his companions, by Philip, by Philip's daughters, mm -hmm. not to go to Jerusalem. Now, he's in the same place he's listening. The place, the folk who are sold out are telling him, don't go. <clears throat> Isn't that something? Everybody around Paul is saying, don't go. That's what he says. He says, we who are his companion and, and, every, and those from that place. They all, where is, where is that place? Caesarea, Philip's house. They're mm -hmm. saying, don't go to mm -hmm. Jerusalem. Now, 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 many of us would say, well, everybody said don't go. And, <laughs> and they were speaking from the Lord, their prophets and everything. And, and so I decided that I wasn't going to go because, you know, the, 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 the wise counsels in the multitude, multitude or in the council of the multitude, there you go. Yeah. Wisdom's in the, in the council of the multitude. And, and so they all telling me don't go. See, it's one thing when you're looking for an answer to, listen, to hear other people. It's another thing when you know what God has told you to do. Uh, 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 uh. And you start listening to people. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't know the answer, you don't know the direction, you're looking, seeking direction, and God and, and other people start speaking and they're from God. It just might be that God is speaking to you, giving you direction and giving you wisdom. But if you know that what faithfulness is, if you know what obedience is, then other people speaking could just be a challenge to you to be faithful. Mm -hmm. So, we got to be willing to, to not just, once I know, once I know, I, I know I'm not supposed to cuss people out. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to steal that. It don't belong to me. But they say, well, everybody takes them. Everybody is free. They put them in my Everybody's supposed to take them. You can just take it. But I know it's still, I ain't supposed to get that. But everybody, everybody do it. You see people pick them up, put them in their purse, and go about their business. And, and everybody's doing it. It's okay. The boss knows we take them. Should I pick it up? You see, the issue is not what the boss knows and what everybody else is doing. The issue is what has God told you to do? What is God's will for my life? Mm. And it might you might be fine picking it up and taking it. But and I might be fine on earth. Mm. I may not have to deal with the boss, because the boss may be taking them too. <laughs> I, but I may have to deal with my God who told me not to touch it. Mm. Mm. Okay? So we, we just gotta know what God wants, the encouragement to go. They could have been saying to him, man, go back to Antioch. You're doing such a good work. Gentiles right. need to hear from you. Go right. back to Antioch. Yeah. Go take another journey. Go back home. You're, you're so needed. You're so valuable. You're so important. Go back to Antioch. Don't go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Go, go. And his companion probably won't go too. Go, they go. He <laughs> look. Okay. We don't want the pain either, man. <laughs> okay. But look at Paul's response. And this, this. This is, this is encouraging when we were really sold out. Paul was more upset by their pain mm. than he was by the threat of the Jews in Jerusalem. Paul said, why, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? Mm. Why are you so, so, so sad? That, why, why are you doing that? Don't, no, it's okay. Seeing you like this is what's painful. 
See, you can see you not being able to, that's what hurt. That's what's breaking my heart. It, Paul didn't, he didn't say, oh, pray that I can take the pain of Jerusalem. Mm. Pray, pray that God will <laughs> deliver me from, he didn't say that. He didn't chastise them about, no. about what he said. Why are you weeping? Now, he's the one got the threat. The prophecy came against him. <laughs> he's the one going to be tied up. And he's comforted. Mm -hmm. Look at the strength of a life sold out. Mm -hmm. He's the one. Now, if, if you've done very many hospital visits, yeah. you've probably had an opportunity to walk into a room where somebody's very sick. And you're going in to wonder how you're going to give comfort, how you're going to get, so you go in and you, you, you're, you're trying to give comfort. And, and when you leave, you realize that they blessed you more than you ever blessed them. That they were more encouraging to you than you was to them. That they spoke hope. Oh, it's all right, Pastor. It's all, it's all right, preacher. It's all right. I trust God. God, God knows. I, he's giving me a good life. And you know, I'm, I'm not upset. I'm praying for you. I'm praying. And they just encourage you and know and talk about the God, good God is and what and they're in pain and still talking about the grace, the mercy, the kindness, the love of God. Encouraging. That's what that's what a sold out life will do. In the midst of your pain, you won't break. You'll bless. Mm. When you're going through, you won't you won't fall down. God will hold you up. You'll be able to encourage and bless others. When, when, when we get so mad and want to give up because life gets so hard, it's probably because we're focusing on us and not on God. Glory. Mm -hmm. yes. Focusing on God gives you the courage to go through. Now, I ain't saying that everybody stay focused all the time. No, no, it's like having a bad pair of glasses. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to get them back and right. Yeah. But you work on, you get focused and you stay focused on God and God brings you through. Mm -hmm. That's that's how that's how we do that thing. That's how we make it. That's how we make it work. But now, Paul was not what's the word a masochist, right? That's the word. Those who like pain. And, mm -hmm. Paul wasn't that. Paul Paul what Paul what Paul wasn't one of them, because he says he's ready to be bound and to die. But he didn't stop there. He says, for the name of Jesus. Uh, See, Paul was like, I'm the only one to suffer under his authority. Uh, if, it, if, if it don't come by God's will and God's authority, I don't want it. Amen. I ain't looking for no extra pain. Ain't looking for nothing. That, no, it's by God's authority. Amen. I ain't going to hurt because you tell me I should. Uh, I ain't going to put up with your mess because you say, oh, you're a Christian. Ain't? No, 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 no. If it ain't by God's authority, mm -hmm. under God's will for my life, then you take that somewhere else because I don't really, I don't really want to hurt like that. Mm -hmm. No. I don't have to let you hurt me because I'm Christian. Right. That's right. Now, I will do what God called me to do. I'll be what God wants me to be. But it's in the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus. Name. Because of the authority of Christ. For the name. That's why we mm. go through those things. Alright? Yeah. That's why we're doing it. So he wasn't just looking to hurt. He wasn't just being satisfied to be in pain. That it's okay. It's okay. He wasn't just being satisfied for the pain. All right. <clears throat> Paul was willing to endure whatever came with. Y'all get this? Well, your life sold out. He was willing to endure whatever came with, refusing to deny or disobey God. Mm -hmm. He says, "Whatever my obedience brings." I'm willing to handle. Yeah. I'm willing to go through whatever obedience brings. I will not deny or disobey him. So whatever it brings, I'm willing. If it's if it's if it's going to be just I get bound and sent to jail, or they lock me up. I've been there before. But or if they're going to to take my life, it's whichever way. It's okay. I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to be obedient. That is a strange mindset. For today's Christian. Mm -hmm. yeah. Today's Christian thinks obedience should just be about doing what God wants us to do, wants me to do when it's convenient or I feel I can do it, and then I ought to have a payday at the end of it. Mm -hmm. That that it's about being it Christianity for, for, for us is about God blessing us and not our serving him. And, 
and not 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 just that that is spiritually narcissistic. It is also disempowering. Mm -hmm. We rob ourselves of power when we only look for God to bless mm. and for us not to serve. Mm. It's, it's in serving him that we find power and strength and deliverance. Mm. If not, Jesus would have come as the reigning king. Mm. Mm. But he came as the humble servant because it's in, the, it's, it's in serving God that we overcome evil. It's in serving God that we put Satan and, 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 and the stuff of darkness away. See, it's that's how that's how we that's how we walk victoriously in serving Him. It's but when we start get confused and start doing it for us, when I start doing it to, to please myself, it could be the same thing, but I'm doing it to please me and not not for him, mm. then I, I really disempower me. Because I become the end of the, of the road for me. Ah. I become my own source, my own strength, my own conclusion. And when, when, when my world stops with me, it stops in weakness. Mm -hmm. ah. It has to go beyond me. And it, in, in order to do that, I got to serve him. That's why he calls all of us to be servants. Because mm -hmm. that's how we're strong. That's how, that's how we win. That's how we get over. That's how we please him and we walk in holiness. That's how I can forgive you. I can't forgive you if I don't serve God. If I'm not a servant of God, I can't forgive you. I can say I forgive you. I can tolerate you. I can, let, I, I can forget about you. I can put you over there and I go over there. But I can't truly forgive you unless... I have sold out to God and I'm his servant because he gives the authority, the love, the power, the grace to forgive those who are owed, who really, in most cases, don't deserve forgiveness. And we can't be mad at that because how much does forgiveness do we deserve? How many of our sins have we actually paid for? So, y'all, okay, y'all got it. Look how Paul's faithfulness moved the spiritual needle of others. They don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. And then they said, well, we can't change his mind. Mm -hmm. We done tried, we done used every argument we know, we done pleaded with him. We can't change his mind. Mm -hmm. So when they couldn't change his mind, they gave up. And what did they do? They said, let the will of God be done. Amen. So God, Paul's faithfulness moved their spiritual needle. They went from go against God, go against, don't do it, don't go, don't go. Don't do what God wants you to do, do something else. Do what we need you to do, do what we want you to do. Went from there to, all right, that. do what God's will is. So their inability to, to change Paul's mind led to their submission to God's will. How many people we let off the hook or, or let the enemy have because we don't stay faithful? If we stay faithful, right. if we don't compromise, Amen. we keep the choice ever before them. Right. If we compromise, we remove the choice and we, we join them in their madness. Mm. But by not compromising on God, the choice stays ever before them. Now they got to decide. And, and, and here they chose to do it God's will, to, to do it God's way. So... If your faithfulness can be used to change the hearts of others, how valuable to God is your faithfulness? Mm -hmm. And if your faithfulness is valuable to God, how necessary is it for how you live? And if faithfulness is necessary for how you live, then why do we find it so hard to be faithful? <laughs> I, suggest, I suggest that we find it so hard to be faithful because Clifford Wright Sr., you find it so hard to be sold out for Christ. Mm -hmm. 
to make the decision up front. I'm willing not only to be bound, but I'm willing to die for him. I don't take the time to convince myself at Philip's house that I'm going to serve God no matter what. So pump your brakes. Slow down. Take some time. And you and the Holy Spirit convince you that no matter what life looks like, no matter what comes your way, you're going to be faithful to God. That you're not going to do it the same old way. Jerusalem is no longer the epicenter. It is now the Spirit of God that dwells in you. So let's be faithful. Let's do it God's way. Sold out. No compromise. No compromise. Because when you compromise, you let those you love think that they're okay. And they're not. Okay? That's good. Questions? Concerns? Thoughts? All right. Come on, let's pray. You're early. You are not early. <laughs>